Okay. I'm getting a thumbs up here. We're good to go. Uh, so welcome everybody to the webinar Linking Out, Understanding Links and SEO. Uh, just to get the ball rolling and start the webinar, and a little bit about myself. I am a, well, my name is Jose Ustatevi. I'm a web analyst and SEO at Cardinal Path. I've been with Cardinal Path for uh, almost a year and in the industry overall for the better part of five years, the last five years. Now what, what got me started into this industry is SEO sort of had the chance of working with very exciting projects and very exciting clients. And in the last year or so, I've taken an extra step to, towards the analytics and strategy side of things, including SEO, but taking a more holistic view uh, from a business side of things. So hopefully today you'll you walk out this seminar with a couple ideas you can take and implement right away. Uh, we'll be taking questions at the end or during if it's uh, directly related to what I'm talking about. Uh, the, the, I'll, I'll pay attention to the chat box, so if you have a question, just go ahead and throw it in the chat box. Um, what normally happens is I'm just in a role and I don't pay attention to the chat, so we'll, take, we'll answer at the, at the end most likely. Here's my contact information, so feel free to uh, send me an email with any follow-up questions after the, the webinar, and I'll, I'll make sure I'll, I'll get back to you. And LinkedIn, Twitter, I believe you guys are familiar with those things. I'm getting, getting a couple of getting a couple of comments on the sound. Uh, let me see if I. I can make a couple adjustments here. Let me go a little bit closer to the mic. Okay, hopefully everybody can can hear me okay and clearly. Okay. Hopefully everybody can. I'll, I'll try to speak as clearly as I can, and uh, yeah, hopefully everybody can can understand. The All right. So the point that the presentation is going to be pretty straightforward and the five topics that we're going to cover are the links in a, in a context and, and links are just a part of it. Link building basics, the internal link building, external link buildings and take a look at a few tools that you can go ahead and, and, and try. Okay, to start, links, links are just a part of it. And I'd like to start with this graphic because it illustrates a couple of points that people tend to either forget or lose perspective when they're doing SEO or in link building or anything online, which is the purpose. Uh, if, if, I was in a, if I was in a room full of people and I, was, I would pose the question to you guys, why are you doing link building? Why are you doing SEO? I bet that I would see some heads nodding and, and, and yeah, I know what I'm doing SEO. And I, I'm sure I could read some lips saying, well, I want to get uh, more traffic, I want to get more search engine exposure, and I want to get uh, more uh, ranking, uh, better rankings. And those are, are very true, but when you do anything online, in particular SEO, because you have these things that are metrics that you have to have in mind, but are ultimately not why you came uh, online to, uh, was not the purpose of your business. So ultimately, you surely have a, a, a bottom line. Either you want to sell more items on your e-commerce, you want to make more money on your AdSense, you want to make people to, to download more, uh, more white papers so you can generate that lead. So those are the, the purposes and, and those are the metrics that you have to have in mind all the time. And when you do uh, a link building campaign in three, in three, four, five, six months, you want to compare what has happened to your bottom line. So a sense of purpose. Don't, don't forget that you're not in business to build links or get better rankings. Or, or get more traffic. You're, you're in business to either uh, well, likely make more money in one way or another. 
And the other one is that links are just a part of a set of things that if you don't have those things, you're not going to make the dent that you're intending to make. And by that, I mean that if you don't have the really basic basics, if you don't, if you're not clear on what your your content is, if you don't have uh, a social media presence, if you're not sure what your content strategy is, your on-page optimization, your site takes 10 minutes to load per page, then you might want to consider the other factors that go around link buildings because everything connects to each other. Or everything is interconnected, I should say. Uh, so pay attention to, to those things and, and take all the all the advice that you hear, including here, with a little bit of perspective. Which takes me to the next slide, which is now, after this webinar, try and take a step back and see if you have the basics covered. Uh, and for that, you know, SEO Moz, every year they put out the search engine uh, ranking factors, which is a list that they take a room full of uh, great SEOs and Put and pull out. What they ask the question: What is uh, what is what are the, the most important things that you think are affecting SEO? And they pull a report every year. Right. This year, it, it looks very uh, on the statistical. It looks very mathematical. But you should be able to uh, go there. There's the, the the URL, or if you just search search engine. Search ranking factors, SEO mods, you'll, you'll find it in, in any search engine. But uh, if you haven't taken a look at this and, and if you're not sure if you have the basic covered, I highly recommend you go there and take a look at it because it does, you know, it's, it's a bullet point form of, okay, do I have titles? Do I have descriptions? Do I, do I have a content strategy? So that, those kind of things. So in the link building basics, what we'll cover are going to be why links are so important, page rank, the anatomy of links, relevance of origin, topical consistencies, neighborhoods, deep linking, and type of links. Hopefully some of those terms make sense. Hopefully some sound a little bit uh, off, and, but we'll cover, we'll cover all of them. So why links are important? There's a variety of reasons why you should be knowledgeable and active on your link building efforts. Uh, you probably heard that links are like a seal currency, online currency. The more you have, the likelier it is that you're going to be successful in getting good traffic and and getting uh, better results for your online, uh, for your organic and, and SEO traffic. Now, there is the obvious reasons why you would you will want to uh, do link building because it helps the site popularity, it helps the site become more authoritative, uh, it means that you have a quality site, and it means to that it's a trusted site. So search engines take a look at all these things and and assign trust, assign uh, authority, and just people notice these things. Imagine that you are a librarian organizing all the internet, and if you start reading some books and you see a citation in one book, because links are like citations, right? If you see a citation in one book to uh, one particular book, well, you, you say book A, uh, it should be interesting, and then you start, you keep seeing citations and citations from, from good books, from normal books, and from bad books, then that's what makes a linking profile, and that's why you want to have uh, good links. And the other side of things that I wanted to just mention on the link building side is that I like to make the comparison with link building to personal training and public relations. Personal training because you have to do the work. If there's no roundabout way to link building. If you do, you have to get involved and you have to do what you need to do. <laughs> and also public relations because there is a component where you have to build relationships. If there is uh, those high value links where you have to contact and you have to gain the trust 
of somebody that is that is uh, has an authoritative site or, or a site that is good, and everybody's making a pitch to them. So you have to strategize and, and gain the trust of uh, that person. And this little graph here on the top, on the bottom right, uh, it, it, link building affects everybody. And from a search engine's perspective, uh, measure, it measures the site's credibility, it creates context to your site, uh, and it creates the relevant results. And from the SEM specialist, it improves keywords ranking, increases traffic, increases sales, to create relevant results as well. Yeah. But, and, and from the salesperson, well, the salespeople just get uh, more traffic and more sales. And that's where we should be. That little stars there and increase sales, that's where we should all uh, have our mind in. <laughs> all right. Page rank. So Google Search Engine's link analysis algorithm assigns a numerical weight uh, to each page, per se. And page rank uh, it's, it measures a relative importance within that set that Google is assigning the, the numerical value. Now, if you go to toolbar.google.com, you will be able to download the toolbar and see uh, page rank or PR. The PR goes from 1 to 10, and uh, most sites are under, around the 4 to 7 range. Uh, if you have a new site, you'll have 0, 1, or 2. Uh, and if you have an awesome site, I think Facebook uh, is has 9. Uh, there's very few have 10. Uh, there are so if you are around the four or six or seven, consider yourself healthy, but don't obsess for PR ranks because uh, it's been exploited, exploited too much. And, uh, and Google is very aware that people are obsessing for, for over page rank. So they don't, they update it uh, every few months. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a measure that gives you an idea of how um, how important is that site, but don't take it too hard and, and don't think that uh, that is final say. So how about, what's the anatomy of a link? How a link looks like? Of course, everybody has seen a link and everybody knows what a link is. And from the search engine's view, uh, this is what a link looks like. So you have a open with an A, href, your link, and then have an anchor text. The, the href is usually the URL, and the anchor is what comes, uh, that the, the words that you see underlined. And that is pretty important, as we're going to talk in a bit. Now, where the link points to, what you have to have in mind is that keywords in the URL are important. So if you're doing a link, if you're creating a link, and if you're creating a, a page, have in mind how that page is named. And for those of you who use WordPress or any other uh, website, uh, web uh, content system that can man manipulate your, uh, your URLs, make sure that you name your site, your pages, um, I'm sorry, yeah, no, I'm sorry, okay, sorry, uh, make sure that you name your pages uh, with keywords in the URL, because it is important, so when people, when Google sees, or any, any search engine sees the URL, it will see, well, this is obviously about multilingual sites for humans, search engines, I get an idea of what it is. Now, there is a few types of ways that you can link. Well, there's two types. Either you link with an image or the general. The general way is that you either link with text or you link with an image. So which one is better? If you're doing a regular text link, in terms of SEO and relevancy, that's the best kind of link that you can have. So if you can try, if you're aiming for a link, try to get this kind of link, where it's just my site and good anchor text. If you're looking for the, an image, 
and a text, uh, then try to have both. So you have the link to your site with an image and an anchor text. That is nice. And if you're linking uh, through an image, well, that's better than nothing, but try to get an accurate text as much as possible. There's two types of links, the no follows and the regular links, or I shouldn't qualify them, qualify them as two types of links. There's an attribute that's called no follow, and the, a no follow link does not pass relevance from a uh, site to the page link. So this means that <clears throat> because people tended to uh, take advantage to, of blog comments and they just go and create robots that posted a bunch of comments in all the blogs and, and just start creating crappy links, basically. Uh, the search engines came up with this no-follow idea. But if it has no follow, you know, they'll basically won't consider that link. It won't pass any value from one page to another. Now take, a little, take that with a little bit of perspective because if you have a link from a CNN article that it happens to be no follow, I think that even if it's no follow, you have your link from CNN, so there's a little bit of a gray area there and I'm sure that it passes some value. Don't quote me on that, even though it's recorded, but it's it, no follow links do pass some value, but officially they don't pass. And follow, follow links, well the regular kind of links, uh, pass, do pass some value. So when you're asking for links, try as much as possible as uh, to get a no follow link. And you'll hear me throughout the presentation when you're asking for links. And this is pretty common thing that people tend not to do, which is not ask for links. So when I'm saying, when you're asking for links, picture yourself just writing an email and saying, hey, you know, can I ask for, uh, can I have a, a link from your, from your page, link to this page? And if they put a no follow, then say, well, you know what, my site is very trustworthy, you don't, you don't necessarily need to put the no follow, let me know if I can it in any way, so try to make the relationship so that no follow goes away. And the anchor text, as I was mentioning before, it's pretty important on what the words that are underlined, what the words that are being clicked on say. So if you have a click here, I mean, it's better than nothing, but probably you'll be able to get something better. I mean, if you have a click here on an article, I would email the, the publisher right away and say, look, why don't you change this link into home security systems? And this is just an example, right? Uh, and, and this is relevant. It, it, it gives the search engine some context. And this is the kind of thing that they're going to help your rankings and, and your, your good traffic. If you have, let's say you have a business that's a grouchy owner, then instead of putting all of your, <laughs> all of your, I don't know how, who came up with grouchy owner, <laughs> instead of putting all, your, all of your links to grouchy owner, you might want to add some diversity to your uh, linking profile. So in this case, grouchy owner, owner, home security experts. So you can play around with, the, the more you play around with the theme of your anchor text, the more natural it's going to be and the more uh, rankings long-term you're going to have, or the more good traffic long-term you're going to have. And uh, this is what I was just saying, that you have to achieve the diversity. Now I'm a squash player, I don't know if anybody plays squash here, but uh, squash sites don't have I guess, <laughs> the, the need uh, or squash players are not, uh, let's say, let's say <clears throat> the best link builders in the world. So I've seen a lot of a lot of uh, places that are linking to uh, places that have squash rackets, and they also have squash rackets. Now, if you were uh, a search engine and try to 
I always try to relate the search engine to a human being trying to organize things. Now, if you see, if you're that person trying to organize and trying to rack, and you see this column on the left, a bunch of rack, squash rackets, you're going to say, okay, wait a second. This is a little bit unnatural. They, maybe these links are not earned. These links are kind of shoved in somehow. Now, if you see this diversity over here, they're all about squash rackets. And, you know, it's diverse. I would believe uh, I'll give more value to a, a link profile that has this than, than this because it's just more natural. And give that human aspect to the search engines because that's what uh, ultimately they're trying to do all the time. They're trying to simulate human behavior. Okay, relevance. If, if you have a, just like that example of squash rackets, whatever the actor says is going to affect what kind of rankings you're going to get and therefore the kind of traffic that you're going to get. So in this case, if you see uh, one site that has organic blueberries, okay, one link, ah, this probably is about uh, blueberries. And if you see this over, over a bunch of sites, then the search engines are going to, you're going to try to position, position you for that anchor text. And this is very important because there's been some cases where the page is about one thing and the anchor text is about something else. And then the rankings and the traffic are related to what the anchor says, the anchor uh, text is saying. So be careful with this and, and when you're getting links for your site, make sure you're, you're familiar of, for, of the kind of terms that, being, that are being uh, linked to you. Having said that, um, there is a common mistake that seems to be uh, underestimated, which is that only the first link to a page counts. So if you have one page, one article that has two links to your page, only the first one is going to count. Now this goes for internal linking and external linking and anything. So if you have, in this case, one link that says click here, and then the other one later on the page that has awesome, awesome art anchor text, search engines are going to see, all right, uh, here's a link, click here, and I uh, did the relationship, and oh, this, here's another link to the same page, I'm just going to forget about this one. So make sure that uh, you, when you are uh, getting those links and when you are positioning yourself for those links, you're getting the right anchor text on the first link. This is, uh, when I say this in a group of people, it's when everybody hmm, kind of nods and makes, makes a note. Hopefully it's happening. A little bit hard to, to do this in the book account. <laughs> and as I was mentioning, you have to keep the topical consistency. So when you do the anchor text, Make sure that you're talking about the same thing and you're not linking about squash rackets from one page. Uh, so you, you get links from anchor text pointing to squash rackets and some other links that, that say blueberries to the same page because you're not going to you're going to confuse the search engines and they're not gonna they're not gonna see okay this page is not really strong on one subject, maybe it's about well, hitting blueberries with a squash racket. And that's what we will have for. Uh, <laughs> and for that, uh, for in order to get the best bang for your buck, pay attention to the H1 of, your, of the page you're linking to or that you're being linked to. So if your H1 um, is about blueberries, then make sure that that link that is coming to your page is about blueberries. Okay, if anybody can tell me what this is about, I will uh, give them a prize. Oh my god, there's a few questions here, but I'm not sure that we will. Um, 
<clears throat> answer them. This graphic illustrates topical neighborhoods. And it means that you need to stay within the theme of your uh, of, you need to stay within your theme. So if you are hanging around, and by hanging around means that if you're here, here, you have a network, you have links from a basketball site and you have links from baseball sites and a bunch of people are talking about you in terms of baseball and then somebody, something, somebody's about talking about hockey and then your sports scores. That's, that's great. It makes sense. Now, if you are an SEO and are in this and, and you have all of these links and you're talking about boxing and tennis and, and you have links pointing towards you, these subjects, it's going to look a little bit weird. So it's not that they're going to penalize you or anything, but you're not going to get the strength that you deserve for your industry. So make sure that you are hanging around the same topics that your website is. If you're a law firm, then uh, try to link and be linked to uh, things that surround that are surrounded by law, the other law firms, the law blogs, uh, the, the governments, those kind of things. So it's very easy for if you're a lawyer to place watch to start telling your friends to, you know, you post a, a blog post about tournament, and then you get a bunch of links to Squash, and then you get other links from Flickr, and you you took an awesome picture about Squash. This can creep up on you, so just pay attention to that. Okay, deep linking. And this is a little, talks a little bit about site structure. A lot of a lot of people, when you're linking, think about where you're pointing your link. The whole try the whole page is naturally going to be the most the link uh, the page that has the most links. Therefore, try to avoid the home page when you're doing link, page, uh, link building because like, it's likely that you're going to have pages that are more focused on a topic that is worthy for link, for a link, that are worthy for a link. So this is a better graph and, and it's a better flow to have the links and pass link value. Rather than putting everything to the home page and passing value from the home page to your other pages, you want to have those links pointing to your important pages that are not the home page, that are a little deeper in, in your site structure, and that's going to create a healthy structure and that's going to just boost the ranking overall of your home page and of your linked pages. There's also to take into consideration where the link is coming from. So here is, is a blog, a typical format for a blog. You have the, the content here, you have some links on the side, and you have some links on the footer. Now the, the most important ones and the ones that place the most, uh, that pass the most value are the editorial links. So if you have a link within a blog post uh, that is mentioning you, your law firm because you're awesome, then that is the kind of link that you want and that is the kind of link that is going to pass the most value. Now there's the lateral ones that maybe you are in a blog role or you are in a recent updates or whatnot. Those are second best. And the footer ones, well, those are, those are valuable. Uh, don't get me wrong, but uh, that's the last place that you want to be. But you want to be somewhere on a page, that's for sure. And there is also the kinds of links that you uh, that you can have. You have non-reciprocal, which means that you get a link and that's it. You don't have to link back or you don't have to give anything in. That, those are perfect. You have the reciprocal where people say, well, I'll link to you, but only if you link back to me. Those are not bad, but 
be careful not to do obvious link exchanges because um, it, it's if you have a pattern of getting links back and forth, then it's not going to look good. So that's why that's why I mean here by exchange programs. This is a little bit of a gray area because if I'm sure that if uh, if a uh, Editor from CNN says to you, well, I'll link to you for if you link back to me. Well, I would go for that link. Uh, link rings, which some people try to outsmart the system by having more than one site. So, you know, you link to, if you link to, set, somebody will approach you, okay, you know what, let's do a link exchange. But instead of you linking back, linking back directly to my site, well, you link to site A, site A links to site B and then I'll give you a link to another site and it turns in return links to your site. So if it's the ring that kind of thing, uh, try to avoid it. Link farms, just sites that are created to provide links. And paid links, try to avoid it. I also put a, paid, a little gray area abounds on paid links because this is the kind of thing that Google tells you and, and all the search engines tells you to avoid. Don't don't do this. Um, but again, you know, if if paying for a lunch <laughs> so so you can inform the other person about your awesome content was going to get you a link, well, I would consider that. But in as a general rule of thumb, don't pay for links and especially sites that advertise that they, they sell links. So if a site has, you know, buy links here or some text that signals that they buy links or they sell links, uh, that's going to get you into trouble. And it's not now, it will come. So if you have that and you've done that, just have that on your radar because uh, you know, sooner or later you, it's, go, it's going to be a, an issue to deal with. I just, I'm just seeing a question here that I think we can answer really quickly. That what about what about uh, directories like uh, Yahoo directory or, or those uh, very authoritative directories that that uh, they charge a fee for the links? And I think those are fine as long as they're authoritative and they they have a good record from uh, for providing value to their users. So those are those are not terrible, but that's the kind of link that uh, you want to have as a backup. Those are not the ones that you want to focus. Hopefully that will that answer your questions there. The type of benefits. Uh, you know, from from the from the kind of links that are from relevant sites, from editorial, non-reciprocal, and follow, you'll get authority, you get relevance, you get better rankings, you get better organic traffic, which hopefully will um, will uh, increase your sales and make you more money. And you know something that you have to have in mind too is uh, conversion rate of your organic traffic. So when you're talking about benefits, not only take a look at those, like we were talking before, don't, don't, not only take a look at your authority, at your PR, at your traffic, at your rankings, but also take a look at your conversion rate. And if you don't have a conversion rate, then that's definitely something that you want to start thinking about. Defining your goal and defining the, the goal in your analytics software, be it uh, Google Analytics or whatever you use. Okay, internal link building. <clears throat> like I said, I'm a squash player, and a bit of advice for a squash that I'm sure applies to tennis too, for those who play tennis, and for when it applies to the CO2, that the serve is the one shot that has to be your best shot because you control it. You have the, you have the time to position yourself, you have the time to ball where you're supposed to put the ball. So that's supposed to be your best shot. Same with internal link building. 
internal link building has to be flawless. Because it's something you have complete control over. Giving you a 100% time over uh, profit over uh, time over over our own. It's not as much value as good external links, but it is better than bad external links because it gives context when when search engines are right at your site and they call those links, they'll see the contents and the sign value and relevancy to those pages. So it's a perfect opportunity to create long tail keyword links. And and, and try to position those pages on those terms that are hard to achieve in external ones. A couple of general rules. Uh, you know, home is likely the most uh, important or the most uh, common link that you're going to have just because all pages are, are going to be linked to your home, but not necessarily. Uh, the deeper the pages, the deeper uh, the pages are buried in the structure, the less relevance they have. So, by this, what this is trying to tackle is that if you have an important page that you want to rank and you want to pass value from a link building perspective, link it from the home. So, don't link everything from the home because it's not it's going to dilute your the, the value of all those pages that are linked, and it's not going to work as, as well. So. Choose carefully which pages are more important and try to create your structure linking from the home to those or from the first or the second level linking to those deeper pages. Uh, and like I just said, the more the more links going out of the page, the less relevance they carry up to the pages linked. So try to limit the linking to uh, as little as possible. Uh, I know that. There are some cases, like if you have a directory or if you have an e-commerce or you have a side sidebar or a bunch of links, that's pretty, you can't, uh, that is good to have uh, the, the links to all your categories on the left. But uh, if you have links on, if you're trying to craft and mold your links on, on the editorial side of things, on the top menus, just have that. What pages link? Well, uh, pages that are actually yielding a decent percentage of conversions but are receiving low traffic. And you should be able to go to your analytics uh, software and check this, this information and try to isolate those these pages. Pages that are having low conversion rate but are have a decent amount of, of traffic. And same same idea, but that. And pages that you want to leverage, like a service page. And any any uh, any page that makes an impact on your business, that's the kind of pages that you want to make. Now, when you have when you're trying to decide where to link, and you're taking a look at your structure, this is this is the kind of link that you want to try to avoid uh, in terms of vertical linking. So, if you have this page up bottom is important, let's say you have you can. Link here to here to here, and then you're going to this page. Then this is not the optimal, what the best way of bringing this relevancy and traffic to this page or to this page. What you want to do is go right from the home to that page that is the important one. And that's going to get all the all the the value of the home page and just pour it down to to the page that you want to. So internal link building, again, uh, some in mind that it's something that you control and something that you want to step back and try to think and just think, what are the pages that I want to rank, what are the pages that make more sense to have the most value and grab those pages and see if you can link them in a way that makes sense from your home or from your, your second level subdirectory here. Okay, external link, link building. The first question that you have to have to answer is make sure that the page that you're wanting the link for is worth linking to. That sounds very uh, obvious, but it's a question that a lot of people tend to forget. 
Because if you're asking for a link, think about why am I linking to you? So make sure that you're seeing a question here that you mean the origin or the destination page. Uh, I mean that if if I'm linking, a, if I'm asking for a link from you, I have to answer the question: Why is my page worthy of your link? And so that's yeah. So indeed, so the origin, uh, the destination of the link is what you're trying to make worthy. Okay, so let's go over a few strategies. Google Alerts. Uh, Google Alerts are a great way to not only stay on top of what is important to you, but also give you great ideas for link building. So if there is a particular term uh, that you are keeping your eye on, like swatch brackets or blueberries, make sure that you keep make sure that you have a Google Alert because you'll, you'll get an email every time somebody publishes something about that you'll be able to either go and build a relationship with that person who just published that site, that page, or go and comment uh, on that blog or try to see if you can influence somehow the, the situation. Blog relationships, this, it, it's a necessary evil for those of you who don't like uh, to you know, try to stay behind the scenes. This is where you need to go out there and start uh, building relationships with the bloggers because they are getting requests for links all the time. And if you're just one more of those typical requests, you're not going to get it. So a good way of going about it is, you know, if you see, follow them on Twitter. If you see they post something, then retweet them. Uh, go and try to maybe give an opinion on something they wrote. Try to maybe correct typo or something on their um, on their blog. Retweet them again, comment, and then send them an email. Hey, you know what? Uh, and get the get started from there. Press releases are great, and they're all they're all the times uh, not used in the best way possible. Like this press release is uh, for Vancouver. Uh, it was done in the Vancouver 2010 Olympics. And the only link that they had for their page was this link here, the X experience. I just cropped down a bunch of stuff here that was not good. And yet, even though they had this one link here, the website also includes VX content, VX conversation, and VX services. So I'm guessing that these are terms that they were trying to coin and trying to rank for. So why not put the links there? So if you're, putting, if you're putting a press release, try to position your links to the best pages possible. Now, don't try to put links to all your pages because, again, it's going to move the value. But try to see if there is anything that makes sense from an anchor point of view, anchor text point of view. Here they had also really good um, keywords that they could have linked from. Uh, web and mobile based marketing service or made in DC online mobile services. So those, I, I can only assume that those keywords and that relevancy would have been helpful for them. Social media profiles, they do count. So if you have your Twitter profile, your Facebook profile, Twitter, YouTube, all those kind of things, make sure that you have a link to either your home page or the, the page that you, you want that makes more sense to link to. Um, and that's a link that you can control. So it's also a good opportunity to do, uh, to get the right keyword. Social media mentions, try uh, to, as much as possible, to encourage your social media followership to link to you. And Lululemon does this fantastically, right? They, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, you guys are in Vancouver, but uh, if anybody in Vancouver, you'll know that Lululemon is, is kind of, fever, people will not about Lululemon here. And they have a very active uh, community on all social networks. And you'll see that here in Delicious, they put, the, they put the link, they put links, 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 and 
you know, when, when you have a shortened link, it's good, but these links where they show your URL, they're better. Now, with the shortened links, are, these are harder to get, but if, whenever possible, try to uh, get those. Infographics are also a great way to get some links. This, if you, you don't have to spend a ton of time doing these things. Now with, uh, if I can say so, uh, there is good resources out there online. And if you, have, if you have your team that can create some stuff like this, that's great. If not, uh, see if you can outsource it. Uh, outsourcing is great for these kind of things. And believe me, what, if you create a good one, it will get tons of links. And there is, Google has uh, certain different search commands that are going to allow you to uh, search for new opportunities. So if you go on your Google normal Google search, you could in title and then put the keywords. It's going to give you search results that have this keyword in their title. Same with in the URL. If you put the in URL column keyword, it, it, it will give you um, results that have your keyword in the URL. So that's going to give you even more ideas to, to get from here. And if you want to get uh, results from edu.org or .gov, you can just use the combination of these things. Uh, this is, I mean, in .edu and .org.gov, they, they're typically authoritative sites. And that's, so not just because they have EDU means that they are an awesome site. It just means that the EDU means that they, they're probably an authoritative site because they're a lot of education and you need to build a bit of work in order to get those, these things uh, out there. And more strategies. Uh, you can fix uh, broken links. You can actually, if you can go to a competitor's website, run a link link uh, diagnosis tool and see which ones they which ones are their links that they're they have broken and see if they have uh, uh, a page that is being that is not being linked to then you can just take the link profile from that page and see if there's any other links to that page that are that it's uh, that, that you can fetch uh, ask for better anchor text in existing ones uh, do a confidence analysis, do a link page, and ask. This is the most important one of all. If people just don't ask for links, and it's just important to ask. And uh, for example, I will at the end of this uh, presentation, I've put a link building inventory tool together for the two that you guys, and I'm going to post a uh, blog post about it in our internal path blog. Hopefully, it will be worthy enough for links from from you. Uh, ask for partners, exchange with friends that you know, seems natural to exchange, uh, vertical directories, and give away things. Those are all great ways of doing link building. More strategies, surveys, sponsorships, host a free event, provide a lecture, uh, charity, answer questions. So, and I'm just throwing these things just to kick the, the wheels turning in your head so you can step back and go with your team and see what can you do and, and, and hopefully these the, the words are going to spark ideas. Okay, tools to, to all this and I'll go, I know that we're uh, not a ton of time so these tools are pretty uh, are pretty good and they have pretty good uh, ways of learning, I mean they have pretty good tutorials, I should say. So the first tool that I want to go over is, is SEO Spyglass. This is a, a pretty awesome tool that you just download, install on your computer, and gives you a ton of information on link profiles of, of any URL that, uh, that you want. Open Site Explorer, and this is free to a certain extent. If you, there are some, some metrics that it will only get for pro only. This is uh, 100 bucks a month, I believe, but you can get it for free for one month. So check it out. I, I do think the, the SEO Moz tools 
are, are really good and really reliable and give, give you a lot of good information. But if you just want to see how it, it looks and how the feel for it, go to Open Science Explorer and you'll get uh, a bunch of links back and, and you'll see what kind of information you can pull out from here. Xenu is one of the most uh, techy uh, tools out there, but it's great to see um, to, for running and finding out what links are um, broken links within your site. And this I'm just going to put there and not go too much into it. It's a little, it's a little bit techy, but if you, if you have some time, if you're out of technical background and are uh, not huge technical, but if you're good running these, uh, if this report makes sense to you, then it's definitely something that you have to, uh, to take a look at. This Xeno link select. select. I don't know if you know the last name, but search for Xeno link and you'll get this so far. Link diagnosis is something that I used to use uh, a couple of years ago and it has been revamped recently. So this is, uh, it works with the Firefox extension and you can save link, link profiles and pulls up, pulls uh, information from, a very, uh, from various sources. So it's definitely something that I think you should take a look at. Majestic SEO has also been revamped and has re it's really nice. It's also paid, but it will get you some free free data for uh, some free some limited data for free. Something that's being overused uh, or underestimated is Blacko. Blacko.com is a search engine out there that is kind of like the SEO search engine. So if you go there and they work with slashes, so you can put slash SEO, slash inbound, slash uh, whatever. It takes a little bit of time to get familiar with it. But go to blacko.com and put your site in slash SEO. Now it's going to ask you to create a login, but it's going to give you tons of good information. So if you have inbound links, where are being, where you're being linked to, uh, pages, duplicate content. It's really, really underestimated uh, search site. So I really do recommend it. I put the link for the links for the tools that we just talked about and a couple of others, like ontolo.com, that's also a, a, a good resource. Authority Labs for link uh, for uh, rank tracking. This I personally used it before just to monitor uh, links and making sure that I don't have a drop. Um, and that is it.